Today's video is brought to you by Bright Sellers. So fresh off the Mode 80 review with a base price of $459, not including stabilizers or a carry case, we're back today looking at two TKL bare bones kits from Novel Keys. We've got the NK87 aluminum at 285 bucks and the entry edition in full polycarb for a shockingly low 135. The aluminum will be launched in stock and should be arriving pretty close to when you're seeing this video. The entry is expected a little later this month, but standard disclaimer, shipping's still a disaster right now, so plan on being a little flexible. Heads up too that they did send these out for review, but this video is not sponsored and you know I'm going to say whatever needs to be said anyway. Packaging here is pretty sick. It pulls apart in these two overlapping angled sections. Inside you have a zippered, logoed carry bag, no handle. You also have these two skinny boxes. One contains the coiled cable, same tight foam cord style that we've seen before, matte plastic, decent placeholder for a custom. The other has a rubber coated branded switch puller and a decent wire puller with a heavy handle on it. I like these. The border rides completely assembled with NK PCB mount stabs already installed. Let's just get that out of the way. Contrary to early coverage, these boards are not using plate mount stabs like we've seen in NK stuff before. These are factory lubed, but they're really inconsistent, big rattly, not passable for me out of the box, so just plan on tuning these. Novel Keys did warn that the plate cutouts for the stabs might be a little restrictive for other aftermarket stabilizers, but I think that's just something they said to be on the safe side. Can confirm that Gateron Inc., Duroc V2, Zeal, C3 Equals, and Glorious Goat stabs all work on both of these copies in every position. So this is the E-White version here today. Coating is super nice and it's really heavy out of the box. They also have three new Novel Coat finishes, which look like they have a little texture to them, appear to be really similar to Cerico, but I haven't seen them in person yet. Like their previous designs, we have very simple geometry here, more so than most even. We've got mostly sharp lines, hard angles, the four corners are slightly rounded, and we do have some beveling on the edges. It's clean, very minimal, and I'm a big fan of the reduced forehead here. On the back, we have Novel Keys debossed and two large rubber strips. This thing does not budge on the desk. The only plate option here is aluminum. It's not color matched to the build, which I don't mind because it's less paint or coating to get scuffed after a few hot swaps. Yi and Car on the PCV again, five pin south facing kale sockets with per key RGB. It does have QMK and VIA support as well. Opening is easy enough. We have six torque screws that lets you remove the top chassis then we have the plate pcb assembly mounted to the top in the lower we do have a silicone dampener it's pretty thin as this lower case is just like a big chunky piece of aluminum removing 12 additional torque screws from the top let's just get that plate pcb assembly out of there there's no daughter board here this port is right side mounted it's about three to four inches in from the outside kind of odd positioning i almost didn't catch it with the board being white but there are silicone dampeners between the chassis and the plate which helps to isolate things similar to how that silicone tape mod works on the q1 you can really see how these are implemented by looking through the case on the entry edition. Then it's just two screws to get inside the assembly, which you will need to do if you intend to tune your stabs, which I definitely recommend. Inside, we also have another silicone mat in between the plate and the PCB. And that's really it for the build. There's no plate options, there's no mounting options, and there's very minimal room inside the lower of the case. So your dampening options are pretty limited as well. It's really straightforward. We're also completely locked into the layout here. There's no options for caps lock or bottom row or anything. We do get the F13 key, which I really like. It's just a nice utility to have an extra key up there for whatever, and I think it makes the F row look better to have it a little more compressed. But the big thing to be aware of is that we are locked into that Sangam bottom row. That's a 7U spacebar setup. People that really know customs or TKLs will probably prefer this. The only thing you have to watch out for is that not every base kit will include support for this layout, so you do have to be more careful when you're shopping for aftermarket keycaps. So I do like the sound of this board. It does have just a little bit of hollowness to it, but it's not anything that really takes away and I don't hear anything negative. I think it's got a nice character. The typing feel itself is very similar, but I think I prefer the sound and the typing angle more on the 80. We're at like eight degree typing angle here versus like 5.5 degrees on the mode, but I don't like it $175 more and I prefer the top down look of this board versus the 80. I did try it without the plate dampener and I definitely like it better with, especially the space bar. I like it better with the space bar foam 
as well. I get these from Stupid Fish, and I'll link it down in the description. All right, we're gonna look at the entry edition. But first, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Bright Cellars. Wine is something I used to really be into when I was in hospitality, but like a lot of things, you step away from it for a while, and then it's kind of tough to figure out how to just jump back in. Bright Cellars made this really easy for me. I just took their quick seven question quiz about my taste preferences and they selected wines from all over the world, curated just for me and delivered right to my door. To me, that's a five out of five stars for convenience. Inside your box, you get a wine wisdom insert that has basic opening, serving and storage instructions. You also get cards included of all your personalized choices that feature the label of each bottle, as well as all the important facts like tasting notes, origin, suggested pairings and a place to rate each selection. Out of my first box, I really enjoyed the Cactus Park Red Blend from Paso Robles the 2016 Obscura Petit Verdot and the Tetrachroma Pinot Gris, which comes from right here in Washington State. Bright Cellars is an awesome option if you're doing holiday entertaining and you want to not only provide great wine, but sound knowledgeable as well. And it's also perfect for not showing up empty handed to parties or gatherings. And right now, Bright Cellars is offering my viewers 50% off their first box. That's six bottles of wine for only $45. That's a crazy value. Hit the link to help support the channel, take your quiz and get started today. Big thanks to Bright Cellars for sponsoring today's video and thank you so much for your time. So the NK67 entry shares a lot of the same specs and features, except for the chassis being fully polycarb, of course. The plate is polycarb here as well, and the RGB really pops as a result of this. This copy is pre-production, so it's scuffed in a couple spots, but even on the final, you'll wanna review the acceptable quality variances before you decide to buy. When it's fully built, neither of these spots are visible. This is built out slightly different. The top chassis is just attached with clip points in the mold. You start at one corner and work your way around. Removing the top chassis, you'll see we still have those same silicone strips in here. Six torque screws and we can remove the plate PCB assembly, which is fastened to the bottom this time. We have a dummy thick silicone wedge in the bottom of this case. Unlike the aluminum version, there's plenty of room down here if you want to do your own acoustic tuning instead. One of the major criticisms of the NK67 entry was that we had self-tapping screws and they were just going straight into the plastic. This was bad because they did have a tendency to strip pretty easy and they were not durable if you're somebody that likes to get inside and work on your board a lot. Here we have metal standoffs and they are in metal threads in the lower as well. It is still a polycarb case so they have to mount somewhere, and these posts here I think are a potential weak point. These should stand up just fine to regular use, but they do warn against using a wrench if you need to tighten these standoffs because you could apply too much torque and snap these off. Nonetheless, this is good to see. Switches here are the Everglide Aqua Kings, which are higher pitched than the JWKs, and we're using the upcoming PBT Stone set from Novel Keys as well. You've probably seen PBT Taro shown in a couple of my recent videos. These are pretty exciting kits because they're not only really high quality, but they're also very generous in terms of compatibility and bonuses. Especially right now, PBT sets are really improving. GMK is starting to become a tougher sell unless you just need really specific colors. I played with a couple different configurations here, leaving the lower silicone in, but losing the plate silicone, definitely not not the move. It's really clacky, it's really high pitched, it's shrill. It's just not good. Leaving all the silicone inside this board really mutes it to the point that it sucks every bit of character out of the typing experience. To me, the big dub here is to lose the bottom silicone wedge, but leave the plate silicone in. It gives it a lot of character, it really brings this board to life. I'm a huge fan of this board in this configuration. The big thing you want to be aware of on the entry is that it's a pretty big board to be made of polycarb, so it does have some structural flex. Not that you'd ever do this to your board, but just to illustrate. It's also also pretty creaky if you're just pressing around on the board. You'd never type hard enough on this thing to get it to creak, but if you go poking around, you'll definitely get a reminder that it's made out of plastic. But it's also a $135 custom F13 TKL with really clean acoustics and per-key RGB that includes stabs and a carry case, so it's pretty tough to argue that there's not a lot of value here. Neither of these boards are flexy or bouncy in terms of the typing experience, but both have nice dampening on bottom out. The F13 key is a definite win. The Sangam bottom row may be a deal breaker for some, but it's not for me. As suspected the aluminum version does support my thought that the mode 80 is priced north of where it should be for what it is even though it does offer a little flexibility in the layout there's also no wind keyless layout available here if that's something that you go for it is kind of wild to see a 285 dollars aluminum board fall into the budget end of tkls i didn't want to believe the tkl tax was real 
but it is. Especially when you're looking at the price points of the two mainstream 75s we've got out there, the GMMK Pro and the Keychron Q1, both of which come in over $100 less than this. Nonetheless, I think there's a lot more bang for your buck here than in the Mode 80 for sure. By popular demand, the next TKO we'll check out is the Freebird from Keeps For All, which comes in at $225 for a kit and does offer a wing keyless layout as well. I think both these boards are very attractive at their respective price points. The entry edition offers a ton for the money, as long as you don't expect too much out of a plastic build. And there isn't the big discrepancy here for me that I saw in the NK67, where I really enjoyed the entry edition, but I definitely wasn't sold on the aluminum edition. The acoustics there just didn't hit for me. The acoustics on the aluminum version of the NK87 are much, much better. Like I said, these should be in stock anytime. You can follow me or Novel Keys on socials to be notified when they go live. If you want to see the full Mode 80 review, you can check that out right here. If you want to go all the way down the custom keyboard rabbit hole, you can check out this playlist. If you want to chat about anything, I highly suggest you check out the new private Discord available via Patreon right here. That's it for today, and I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up. <laughs>